Hi guys, today I'm reading for the April 21st reading for the Bible in a Year Challenge. That's going to come from Ruth 3 through 4, Psalms 48, and Acts 3. Ruth chapter 3. Ruth at the threshing floor. One day Naomi said to Ruth, My daughter, it's time that I found a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for. Boaz is a close relative of ours, and he has been very kind by letting you gather grain with his workers. Tonight he'll be winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Now do as I tell you, take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor and don't let Boaz see you until he has finished his meal. Be sure to notice where he lies down, then go and uncover his feet and lie down there. He will tell you what to do. I will do everything you say, Ruth replied. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. After Boaz had finished his meal and was in good spirits, he lay down beside the heap of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he demanded. I am your servant Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your covering over me, for you are my family redeemer. The Lord bless you, my daughter. Boaz exclaimed, You are showing more family loyalty now than ever by not running after a younger man, whether rich or poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary, for everyone in town knows you are an honorable woman. But there is one problem. While it is true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight, and in the morning I will talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you, then let him marry you. But if he is not willing, then as surely as the Lord lives, I will marry you. Now lie down here until morning. So Ruth lay at Boaz's feet until the morning, but she got up before it was light enough for people to recognize each other. For Boaz said, No one must know that a woman was here at the threshing floor. Boaz also said to her, Bring your cloak and spread it out. He measured out six scoops of barley into the cloak and helped her put it on her back. Then Boaz returned to the town. When Ruth went back to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, What happened to my daughter? Ruth told Naomi everything Boaz had done for her, and she added, He gave me these six scoops of barley and said, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said to her, Just be patient, my daughter, until we hear what happens. The man won't rest until he has followed through on this. He will settle it today. Chapter 4. Boaz marries Ruth. So Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. When the family redeemer he had mentioned came by, Boaz called out to him. Come over here, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. Then Boaz called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. And Boaz said to the family redeemer, You know Naomi who came back from Moab. She is selling the land that belonged to our relative, Elimelech. I felt that I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, All right, I'll redeem it. Then Boaz told him, Of course your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Then I can't redeem it, the family redeemer replied, because this might endanger my own estate. You redeem the land. I cannot do it. In those days it was the custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal as he said to Boaz, You buy the land. Then Boaz said to the leaders and to the crowd standing around, You are witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Malon. And with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Malon, to be my wife. This way she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. Then the leaders and all the people standing there replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is now coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nation of Israel descended. May you be great in Ephrathah and famous in Bethlehem. And may the Lord give you descendants by this young woman who will be like those of our ancestor Perez, the son of Tamar and Judah, the descendants of Boaz. So Boaz married Ruth and took her home to live with him. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. And the woman, women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord who has given you a family redeemer today. May he be famous in Israel. 
May his child restore your youth and care for you in your old age, for he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you so much and who has better, been better to you than seven sons. Naomi took care of the baby and cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor woman, women said, Now at last Naomi has a son again, and they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is their family line, beginning in their ancestor, beginning with their ancestor Perez. Perez was, Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Amminadab. Amminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Sal Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. And it's all for Ruth. All, that's all for the book of Ruth. Okay, Psalms 48. A psalm of the descendants of Korah, a song. How great is the Lord, and how much we should praise him in the city of our God, which is on his holy mountain. It is magnificent in elevation. The whole earth rejoices to see it. Mount Zion, the holy mountain, is the city of the great king. God himself is in Jerusalem's towers. He reveals himself as her defender. The kings of the earth joined forces and advanced against the city. But when they saw it, they were stunned. They were terrified and ran away. They were gripped with terror, like a woman writhing in the pain of childbirth, or like the mighty ships of Tarshish being shattered by a powerful east wind. We had heard of the city's glory, but now we have seen it ourselves. The city of the Lord Almighty, it is the city of our God. He will make it safe forever. O oh God, we meditate on your unfailing love as we worship in your temple. As your name deserves, O oh God. You will be praised to the ends of the earth. Your strong right hand is filled with victory. Let the people on Mount Zion rejoice. Let the towns of Judah be glad, for your judgments are just. Go, inspect the city of Jerusalem. Walk around and count the many towers. Take note of the fortified walls and tour all the citadels, that you may describe them to future generations. For that is what God is like. He is our God forever and ever, and he will be our guide until we die. And Acts chapter 3. Peter heals a crippled beggar. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us! The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting a gift. But Peter said, I don't have any money for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankle bones were healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went to the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. While they, when they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out to Solomon's colonnade, where he was holding tightly to Peter and John. Everyone stood there in awe of the wonderful thing that had happened. Peter preaches in the temple. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so astounding about this? And why look at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power and godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of all our ancestors who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy, righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him to life, and we are witnesses of this fact. The name of Jesus has healed this man, and you know how lame he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has caused this healing before your very eyes. Friends, I realize that what you did to Jesus was done in ignorance, and the same can be said of your leaders. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had declared about the Messiah beforehand, that he must suffer all these things. Now turn from your sins and turn to God, so that you can be cleansed of your sins. Then wonderful times of refreshment will come from the presence of the, of the Lord, and he will send Jesus, your Messiah, to you again. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his prophets. 
Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Then Moses said, Anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be cut off from God's people and utterly destroyed. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in the covenant God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, Through your descendants, all the families on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you people of Israel to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. That is all for today's reading. I will see you next time.